Okay, now that we've seen uh, quadratics transformations in vertex form, we can apply that here to this particular problem. So our parent function here, f of x equals x squared, remember our pattern, uh, we have 0, 0, then we have 1, 1, so I'm putting my points here, and then the next point is 2, 4, they increase by 3, side, and then that is our parabola. And then we've learned that the negative causes a reflection, so it's the same exact shape, except that it is reflected over the x-axis. So when we talk about the features, which ones are the same? The same, I'm going to write in blue here. So the domain, remember we said for all the functions we're doing in Algebra 1 are all reals. The range does change. Okay, so the range for our parent function is y is greater than or equal to 0. Our range for our reflection is y is less than or equal to 0 since it got reflected. The vertex is the same for both. Vertex is at the point 0, 0. Axis of symmetry is the same. Remember, that's a vertical line, x equals, and this is x equals 0. It's our y-axis. Our minimum and maximum have changed. Because our parent function opens up, it has a minimum. Okay, the minimum is, the minimum value is y equals 0. The minimum point is at 0, 0. Okay, so remember, this is value. This is the point. Remember, our point is always going to be our vertex. It's just dependent on if it's a minimum or maximum. For our reflection, it becomes a maximum because it is now going down. So again, the maximum value is y is 0 or Again, if it's our point. And make sure you just read that, how it wants those in terms of the homework. Okay, the next problem, it says here, graph each quadratic function, state the domain and range. Okay, so again, we have our parent function, which is y equals x squared. So what I'm going to do is over here on the side, I'm going to write... Let me do this in black. I'm going to write, sorry, I still didn't change the color. Black, okay. I'm going to write the values for our parent function. And I'm always going to start at 0, 0 for our vertex here. And remember, it goes negative 1, 1, 1, 1. And then we have this increase by 3 again, okay. So we go up by 3. And then the next time, we'll go up by, what, 5. And there's this whole pattern thing that we've talked about. So that's our parent function. So all that's going to happen then is with this new one, since we're multiplying by 5, everything's going to get multiplied by 5. So we talked about earlier, oops, and this is 5x squared, sorry. Talked about earlier with the transformations, we talked about this uh, vertical over horizontal and we wrote the values like that. So we did like plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7. And then what did we do? We multiplied that by 5. Okay, it's the same aspect here. So when you do that, you're taking these values. You're going to multiply these by 5 to get those changes. So you have, oops, let me change this to red. So you got 0, and then negative 1, and negative 2. And what's going to happen here is because you're multiplying by 5, you're going to find that you can't always... Um, you're not always going to be able to graph these. So like right here, we were at what would have been over here, 4. But you multiply that by 5 and you're up to 20. And 20 is not going to fit on this graph. So what happens is, because you're multiplying by 5, remember this is called a vertical stretch. And again, it comes because 
of this right here. We're taking that vertical change and we're increasing it. And again, what happens to it, it gets really, really skinny. So we're here and then you go to one, five, and in this case, that's all the points we can fit on here. And you see how much skinnier it gets in graph. Now, if worse comes to worse, one of the things you can do is just always do Y, put this in Y1, and go to your table and put in values and, and look. So the last thing, it asked for domain and range. I forgot to do that. So domain here, still going to be all real numbers. Remember, we said that's not going to change for anything. So domain is all real numbers. Our range also does not change since we did not move it up or down any. Okay, So our range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, for this particular problem, it says determine the equation of the parabola graphed, okay? So, what happens is you've got to compare values, okay? So, what we have here is we have 2, 5. Now, typically, in our parent function, remember, if we have 2, we square that, we get 4. Now, what we have is we've got this value 5. So, what's happened, we've increased it okay how much have we increased it by well all you do is you take the new value okay new value and divide it by what the original value should be or parent value so in this case it's five divided by four which is 1.25 so that means we've multiplied it by 1.25 now our vertex is still the same, okay? You see right here, it's slightly above 1, okay? So we've not shifted it right or left, anything. All we've done is a vertical stretch. So our new function is f of x or y. It doesn't say, it says equation, so you could do y equals as well. 1.25x squared, or 5 x squared. Again, one of the things you want to do on the homework is click an example just to see how they type it out. So you need to know if you need to do a decimal or a fraction. So we're going to skip this page, obviously. Okay. This one also is determine the function E of R that describes this plot. Okay. So, it talks about having this value, 110. If you look, we still start at 0, 0, still opening up, so it's not a reflection, it's not multiplied by negative, or anything of that nature. And it talks about this revolution speed and all this kind of stuff. Really, all we need to do is find it by using that point. Okay, so... Again, start with your parent function. So if x were 100, and we square 100, okay, that means what? We add two, two more zeros, right? 100 times 100. So that should be 10,000. What's our new value? Our new value here is 10. Holy smokes, we got it really, really small, didn't we? So how do we do that? Same thing. We do new value over original value, which should have been 10,000. And then if you simplify that, okay, cancel your zeros, that's 1 over 1,000. So 1 one thousandths, so 1 over 1,000, or 0 .00, 0 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, right? So again, this time it is E, R, so, so you put 0 .001 R squared. Now again, pay attention to format and all that kind of stuff like in the previous problem. Alright, now we have classification. So recognizing, so we have this G of X, it says mark the following statements about 
f of x, which is our parent function, original parent function, and then we have this g of x, which has this a. So what's happened? Well, g of x is going down. Okay, g of x is going down, therefore a is less than zero. It's got to be a negative. Okay, absolute value of a, it's gotten wider. Okay, so if it's gotten wider, that means there's a vertical compression. Remember, vertical compression equates to getting wider. Remember the video we talked about squeezing the hamburger and everything squeezes out the sides, so you're pushing down on it. So how does a vertical compression... How does something get wider? That means you multiply by a number that's what? Less than 1. Now, in this case, it's absolute value less than 1 because we already know the original value is a negative since it's going down. They do share the same vertex, okay? Uh, they share an axis of symmetry. Okay, and those are all the true statements. So everything in red here is true. Okay. What is false, A is not greater than 1, because if that were the case, then it would be opening up. Okay. It is not greater than 0, same, same thing. Okay. Absolute value of A is less than 0. Um, is also not true. Remember, absolute value would be some sort of positive number. Um, the graphs share a minimum. Okay, again, that is false because f of x has a minimum, but g of x has a maximum, so they don't share a maximum either. So that's what your homework's going to look like today, and hopefully this video will help you in getting that done.